Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I want to build a standalone motion detector. We have a house cleaning service, and once a month, my wife wants to vacate the house while they clean it. We leave the house before they are scheduled to arrive, and we would like a way to know when they arrive and leave so we can plan our return home. I know there are smart doorbells and other pre-made solutions out there to give us that information, but what's the fun in that? Let's design and build our own device that sends an email whenever motion is detected in the house. I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi Zero W and a Velman VMA314 motion sensor as the building blocks of my motion detector. This video will show you how to interface between the two and how to configure your Raspberry Pi to send emails. I'll also be referring to a couple of previous videos where we look at how to start and stop a Raspberry Pi that doesn't have a keyboard or monitor. The links are up here. This should be fun, so why don't you join me as I build a homemade motion detector? I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. In this video, there's a little bit of soldering, but nothing too tricky. The biggest potential for trouble is if you mess up on the wiring and fry your Raspberry Pi. But since they're only $10, that's not a big issue. Now let's get started. The Raspberry Pi Zero W is the backbone of the system. These little single board computers are amazing. They run Linux and can be configured to do just about anything. Not only can they monitor and control logic level inputs and outputs, I have even run NASTRAN, a 1970s finite element program that used to be run on supercomputers. They are like peanuts. I can't get enough. We'll interface the Raspberry Pi with a Velman VMA 314 motion sensor. This sensor has three connections and two adjustment trimmers. I've already soldered a female header onto the Raspberry Pi that I'm using for this project, and I installed it in a case. I just have to wire the motion sensor to the header. I soldered wires to a 3x1 female header and glued it onto a little piece of plastic that I will fasten to the Raspberry Pi. I plugged the motion sensor into the header and then plugged the wires into the Raspberry Pi. I plugged the motion sensor VCC into header pin 2 on the Raspberry Pi. I plugged the motion sensor ground into header pin 6 on the Raspberry Pi. Finally, I plugged the motion sensor out into header pin 7 on the Raspberry Pi. This is also referred to as GPIO4. Then I used a couple of rubber bands to hold the motion sensor and Raspberry Pi together. This Raspberry Pi uses Raspbian Linux 10, also known as Buster. I downloaded the Noobs image in January 2020. If you are just getting started with the Raspberry Pi, I would suggest you go to raspberrypi.org help to learn how to download and start using your Pi. I'll put a link in the description below. Let's start out by talking about how to send email. We will install a simple mail transfer protocol program that will push email from the Raspberry Pi to a cloud-based internet account. This account will then send the email to the final destination. The reason that I mentioned the Linux version earlier is that Buster uses a program called MSMTP for transferring email. Previous versions of Linux use SSMTP but that transfer protocol program won't work with Buster. First install MSMTP. Use sudo app-git install msmtp msmtp-mta. Note that since the software is already installed in this Raspberry Pi, my screen won't show the full installation process. Next, set up a cloud-based email account. Because the username and password in the email account are not encoded on the Pi, I set up a low security Gmail account that I will only use to send mail from this device. That way, 
If the account gets hacked, it's no big deal. Once you have a user ID and password for your email server, configure MSMTP. Edit slash etc slash msmtprc and add your new PI email account information including the email address and the email account password. I'll put the details in the description below. Write out the file and exit nano. Make sure the mail utilities are installed by entering sudo apt-git install mail utils. To send an email from the command line, type the following command. Echo, your email message text in quotes, the pipeline character, mail-s, the email subject in quotes, and then the email address of the desired recipient. Now that we are ready to send emails from the Raspberry Pi, we have to write a script to monitor the motion sensor and format the information for preparing the emails. I've decided that I want four different emails to be sent to me. First, I would like to receive an email when the motion detector software is initialized. This way I can tell if there's been a power outage and when the power came back on. Next, I would like a watchdog timer emailed to me twice a day so that I know that the motion detector is still operating. For motion detection, I would like an email as soon as any motion is detected. Finally, I would like a summary email sent every five minutes after the initial motion was detected, reporting on the percent of time that motion was detected. This would indicate if there was a lot of motion in the house or if it was just a one-time event like car lights turning into the driveway. Let's look at this flowchart to work out how to program the script. During initialization, GPIO4 is set up as an input and the watchdog timer variable is set. In addition, an initialization email is sent. After that, GPIO4 is sampled periodically to see if motion is detected. If motion is detected, an email is immediately sent with that information. Then the program begins a five minute monitoring of the motion sensor. During that time, the motion sensor is sampled once every 30 seconds, and if motion occurred during that time, it is noted and accumulated. At the end of the five minute period, a percentage of time that motion has been detected is sent with a summary email. If no motion is detected during the five minute summary period, then no summary email is sent and the program begins looking for motion again. During the motion sensor scan, each time the real hour turns 12, a single watchdog timer email is sent. Now let's write the program. Since this is not a very complex program and it doesn't tax system resources, I decided to use bash scripting. Open a text file. I called mine dooremail.sh. On the very first line, enter pound sign exclamation point slash bin slash bash. This is known as a shebang and tells bash that an executable script follows. Then, following the shebang, write the code. I'll put my code in the description below. Then save the code. Next, we have to make the code executable. Use chmod u plus x door email dot sh. If you don't already have one, create a bin directory under your user directory and move the program into that directory. Test the program out by typing the file name, in my case, door email. To match the Velleman motion sensor to the program, I would like the motion sensor to output a high signal for a little over 20 seconds each time it detects motion. That's because I set the loop time for the initial motion detection to 20 seconds and the loop time for the summary report for 30 seconds. Here's a little program to help you set up the time using P1. To calibrate the sensor, I place the motion detector in a place to avoid inadvertent motion and start the program. Then I intentionally trigger the motion sensor 
and let the program display the on time. In this case, the time was only 18 seconds, just a little short. I adjust P1 and try again. This time, the on period is over 20 seconds, just right. I would like this motion detector to operate in a standalone configuration, meaning with no keyboard or monitor. This is also known as a headless mode. In order to do that, we have to configure the Raspberry Pi to start the motion detector program right after the Pi boots up. In order to do that, Add the following line to the slash etc slash xdg slash lx session slash lxde dash pi slash auto start file. At sign lx terminal dash e quote slash home slash pi slash bin slash doormail dot sh. Refer to my previous video on how to start applications on headless pi. See the link here are in the description. Now after the system boots up, it opens up a terminal session and starts the doormail.sh script. That program will continue to run until it's stopped by the user or the Raspberry Pi is shut down. However, you must be careful on how you shut your Raspberry Pi down. You can't simply unplug the power. This will probably corrupt the SD card which will cause the Pi to fail. Check out my video on how to safely shut down a headless Pi. See the link here or in the description. Finally, place the motion detector in a location that can sense activity near the door. Plug it in and be informed whenever somebody enters or leaves. Thanks for joining me today. We made a motion detector that will let me know when the cleaning people have arrived at our house and when they leave. It works really well. Plus, the things we learned today will help us make other monitoring devices in the future. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down and leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon.